I'll do that again, just because I like to. <laughs> <laughs> Don't trap your finger. <laughs> Hello and welcome to this first edition of Sewing Bee Behind the Seams with me, Sarah Payne, and some friends of mine that I've brought along just to chat to you today. Now, as you probably heard, the Sewing Bee is back for season seven, 2021, and we have 12 new contestants and 10 weeks of fabulous TV to enjoy. So what we're going to do today is we're going to just have a little chat about what happened in the first show or the first episode of the series which was wardrobe staples and today i'm going to get you, you uh i'm going to introduce you to two of my gorgeous stitchy friends alistair mcdonald and samantha hamilton so first of all uh, i'm sarah payne i am a predominantly known as a quilter but i'm a hobbyist dressmaker as well um, I'm an author, fabric designer and regular sewing guest on Create and Craft. And now I'm going to introduce you to Alistair MacDonald. So Alistair, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? So hi guys, I'm Alistair. Um, you'll see me on Create and Craft TV and I run my company House of Alistair and I um, have had a very long career in um, fashion and I am a ladies couturier. Thank you, Alistair. Now, I interviewed you not so long ago, and I was absolutely <laughs> amazed at your, your history and the amount of stuff that you've actually done, because I know you from the mm. green room, obviously. You bring me bananas on a Sunday morning, <laughs> with, and, and pano chocolate, you know, which is always popular. Yeah. But you come from a wealth of experience, haven't you? You've, you've studied um, couturier as well as sort of demonstrating it to us on TV haven't you so tell us a little bit about that very quickly so literally I'm like a hairdresser I um, I'm a women's wear pattern cutter and um, to trade and um, couturier is just a big posh word for um, women's designer and um, literally <clears throat> it doesn't matter what country I'm in or which language has been spoken around me I have the tools in which I can take a set of measurements from a person draft a pattern and make you what the creation is that's in my head oh i wish i could do that <laughs> and, <laughs> and we've also got with us today samantha hamilton so hello samantha do you want to tell us a little Hi. bit about your background nice to see you my, my darling you, Sarah. so basically i'm a bit similar to alistair i went to university to do pattern cutting and fashion design um so that's a little bit about me uh just for prints we delivered paint and craft you know beautiful prints you know, African wax fabrics for dressmaking and quilting and that sort of thing. Um, and the other things that I like to do, I design uh, knitwear, but I use that for um, knitting machines that none of us talk about. You know. So, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Well, these are our guests today. And now let's crack on with what happened on Wednesday's edition of The Sewing Bee. So obviously it was week one. And it was wardrobe staples. So we had our three uh, challenges. We had our technique challenge at the beginning, which was a shell top. We then went into um, the creations challenge, which is basically your transformation with some t-shirts. And then we had the beautiful um, buffet dress at the end. So let's talk about them one at a time. So first of all, the shell top. We Actually, um, Alistair, we saw this, I think, back in season two i think season two they had a shell top on there what did what was your uh standout pattern or or, or project on the uh, on the shell top challenge what did what did you think well it's, it's sometimes the the um the more elaborate a pattern can be doesn't necessarily mean that it's the um it's going to have the, the the wow factor sometimes the most simplistic things for instance darts are a very, very tricky um, thing to get um, right. So sometimes people go right to the end of the dart and they back tack. Um, what you should do is you should leave a length of thread and press your dart out so that you get, so it, it takes out a lot of that bump that you get. So if you back tack right at the point, what you'll get, you'll get these dimples in your fabric. But if you leave the thread and you knot it after you've pressed it, then you'll have a much smoother dart but i thought that it's a it's a very everybody wants to do the the big 
the big creation and the creative parts, but to actually get the basics right, fit and form is is one of the the, the key key. Uh, I can't speak this morning. <laughs> Key areas. <laughs> well, I thought it was quite interesting that they struggled. I think it was um, Far Fari and Julie both struggled with the buttonhole, with the buttonhole on the back. And Adina, didn't she sew it inside out? So the, the basics there. Um, I, know, I know it's the first challenge in the first episode so there's a lot of pressure there and we know what it's like to sew under pressure and how easy it is to make mistakes but like you say that was a, that was there was no place to hide um, in that particular uh, um, challenge I thought Samantha what did what did you think well I think it's a really good start for them to do something very simple we say simple but it's not simple because all those key factors like Alistair pointed out you know like if your facing isn't correct, doesn't look right, and then you talked about buttonholes. All these kind of key points are so important. All these little details are very important. Back to darts, personally, sometimes, depending on the fabric, um, sometimes it's good to cut open that dart, which often we don't talk about, but if you're doing a 50s dress, um, years ago, they would cut open the dart and press it open, you know, so you've got less of a bulk as well. So there are other ways to do darts, um, and then you pointed out Adina, if that's her name, the Asian lady, the beautiful girl, she she um, sold hers, she sold the back, didn't she? And then she had to yeah. reopen it. So she was making a right mess. I just think they've all got potential, but they're panicking, aren't they? Yes, you know? yes. I mean, you ended up with Damien, who... What, I think he said something like, yes, I read the pattern, but I didn't pay attention to it because he didn't, yeah. he didn't put the facing in, he had raw edges. And Gosh. watching that, I thought he needs, to, he needs to calm down. And I think that's a, that's a good point. When we start with these, it's the first episode, it's the first challenge, it's the first time they've been on TV. They've got camera crews everywhere. The pressure must oh. absolutely be ramped up, which we saw because there were tears. Yeah. Um, a, a little bit later when we got onto the, onto the buffet dress. And we know what it's like when we're doing TV, when you've got live cameras. And we don't have that many people in the studios with us. We're just dealing with one camera person, basically, in a presenter. But they've got all of these people around hovering. Um, and they're in a place which they know can change their lives. The pressure must be absolutely Im immense. And I think... Talking to other people about these episodes um, who sew at home, I think sometimes they forget that element to it. They think, well, I wouldn't have sewn that in backwards. Yes. But the pressure and the time constraints are, are absolutely, absolutely massive. So... I, um, okay. I, think, <clears throat> I think one of the things that they should have done, and I know we said this um, off um, camera before, is that because it was a technical challenge, I think rather than allowing them to choose their own fabrics, everybody should have had <clears throat> the same fabric because it was a technical challenge. They were, they were critiquing, you know, the hems, uh, the darts, the necklines, the way that it had all been put together. So I think if everybody had a fair advantage where it was, you, you're all given calico, for instance, to start yeah. off with, and it's all about the finish and the technique and how the garments all look. So they all, they're all doing the same thing, but, you're just not allowed to choose your own fabric because then they were critiquing things like um, pattern placement and things like that. And I thought that that yeah. somebody who was maybe is a bit savvier who chose a ditzy print where it's easier to get away with uh, placing, but then somebody chose a big bold print, you could see on the centre back seam that it just was it, it wasn't matching at all. So I think if everyone was given the, the, the fairest opportunity, which is everyone just got, say, a plain blue cotton or something. I think I that's a very to, valid point. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Sam. I to, yeah, I have to agree with everything that Alistair saying. And all I can do is visualise Alistair being on Sewing Bee, you know, and being the presenter and <laughs> kind of asking the right kind of questions. Because everything you said there about having, the, you know, the equal style of the fabrics being the same, then you really do get to find out how good they are as a sewist or sewer or designer or whatever. I have to totally agree with what Alistair has just said. Especially when you've got so many different skill levels at the moment, because you've got people who have been sewing for years and then you've got like Raphael who has started sewing in lockdown. 
So, you know, wow. how they actually choose those different fabrics and how they, how they manage their projects, is it, it would be great if we could see them. Personally, I think the first, the first week, no one should go. We should just get the opportunity to get to know the contestants because we've got 12 of them. Um, and I know I kept making notes and going, okay, who was, who was it who did that? And, and, and I wrote down things like in my notes, I've got things like, um, I think it's Jean. It's got a cat called Yoda. So, you yeah, know, things yes. like that to help oh, the me hairband. remember. And the hair yeah. <laughs> and it's the things to help me remember them because 12 is a lot of people to get to know in a single was it episode. Always, sorry, was it always 12? I don't know. That's a good question. Because mm. I think series one, wasn't series one just six episodes? Right. I think there were fewer people in series one, but yeah. when they were tasting, when they were first on BBC Two. Did but obviously you get now. The impression, did you get the impression that they didn't know what they were doing? Did, did that kind of come across to you all? What, what, did, what do you both think about that? What do, what do you mean? The contestants well, well, didn't know what they were doing. Yeah, it just seemed a bit all over the place, or the direction of it, you know, the way it was facilitated. And, you know, that, well, that's, that's just my personal opinion. I just want to know what you two thought. I, I think they've got challenges this year that they haven't had to deal with previously because of the current situation we're in and they had to be a bubble and everything like that. And I think perhaps that leads to challenges that they haven't had to deal with before but wasn't last wasn't last year's i'm just trying to think whether last year's was in a bubble too because this one seems to come this yeah I think, yeah i think that does that does um lead to it but i quite like the documentary style of filming which does sometimes mean you do get someone's elbow in front yeah. of you know the camera or a head slightly out of focus but i quite like yeah. that sort of documentary documentary feel but um, can we move on then to have a look at the transformation challenge, which was the second challenge, which mm -hmm. was the t-shirt. <laughs> because I saw a lot of panic in those eyes where they just went, and Adina was just like, I just grabbed stuff. Just well, grabbed I liked, stuff. I liked what Adam did. Were we talking about the t-shirts? We are talking about the t-shirts, yes, we I are liked, indeed. I liked, I liked his eye. I liked the way he cut the fabric. I liked the way that it flowed. And am I right, if I've got Adam right, did he have to take the little bow off because it didn't need it to be on there? Mm. That's what they said, he, yes. Esme he did the said, scarf. Yeah, it I would loved, be... I loved, I loved his work. I thought, he, I thought The handkerchief really dress, I thought, I thought that should have won. If he hadn't stuck the bow on, but we do know, if you watch the, you watch the show a lot, you know Esme likes a bow, but it's got to be a big bow. Yeah. Yeah. Just, the colours didn't work <laughs> and that he just I think he said he panicked and stuck the yeah. bow on and when he was saying it on I was going no don't do that but the handkerchief yeah. the way he used the bias cut with the handkerchief dress oh. and off the shoulder I, I thought he should have he should have won that and if he hadn't had the bow on that I think Andrew would have come second because Andrew's was very imaginative I felt um, but when you looked at the back, the construction of it, it was, his heart was slightly oh. off center, but it wasn't enough to be like it was meant to. It was sort of, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to be sort of, off, if you're going to put a heart, you either put it central or you do that. You don't do slightly off because then it looks like a mistake. Um, but I thought it was so imaginative and I could actually see somebody wearing that. And I felt the same as well about um, Adam's handkerchief outfit. I could see a, a young girl down on the beach wearing that completely. What did you think, I, Alistair? I think for me, I think <clears throat> I loved Adam's um, scarf because he actually looked at the fabric and what and he what he produced was dictated to by the fabric. So he has a fabric knowledge as to what different fabrics do. One thing that was sort of a bit disconcerting for me was literally everybody in that challenge seemed to panic and everyone literally were climbing over themselves in the haberdashery department. And I kept on seeing clips where it would go to somebody else and they'd gotten some you know fancy fringing and they were just adding and it was just what have you and I was just like you know <laughs> calm down dear <laughs> exactly you know at least look at the at least look at to see whether or not the color actually matches the t-shirts that you've got or whether or not the symmetry is working or what have you but I think some of them didn't really get the task the task was to use 
the t-shirt the t-shirt was t supposed to be the the um feature yeah the feature it was supposed to that was what it was supposed to be so if if you say to somebody you know that you you need to make a a, a top but they they made a bag and they did all the all, all the other things around it then you're not hitting the brief and i didn't think a lot of them hit mm. the brief there was a bit too much of um trimming going on for my uh, oh God. Yeah, da Damien with that 1920 <laughs> he said I'm going to put this 1920 style fringe I was don't don't Jeez. and the fabric didn't go and he had holes and I thought I thought after seeing that Damien is out the door um but yeah the the, the panic in their eyes but I loved it it was Adina with her harem pants with yes. the placement of that fabric. Oh my God. <laughs> and Patrick just lost it. And actually he lost yeah. it twice during that episode, didn't he? He caused, mm. and we've all done that on air as well, where something has just tickled us and you cannot stop laughing. But, mm. she, and it was only when she put it on the dummy, she went, oh, I, I've just noticed. <laughs> 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 For the 10 minutes before that, I was going, don't put it there. Mm. I thought that was hilarious, hilarious, and a really light moment that I that I rather enjoyed. <laughs> I think if she had used a bit of the red to balance it out either side, and maybe put a triangular pocket, it might not have looked as, um, yes, yeah, terrible. <laughs> unfortunate. I think we yes. phrase it as unfortunate. <laughs> but you, what, you know what I want to say about all these things that we're talking about. I think what's beautiful about, about it, what you're going to see over these episodes. It's the journey and the improvements. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Which is why I think we should always have an episode at the beginning where everyone goes through. So we've got, there's less of that. Nobody wants to go out first. And we will be talking about who went out in a moment. But um, who, nobody wants to go out first. And you can see how those emotions just boiled up. And maybe if the first week there was nobody leaving mm. um, and they had that chance to relax into the building learn new sewing machines, um, get used to the cameras and give us a, an insight into who they actually are in a more relaxed environment before the actual you're going home starts. But um, let's talk now very quickly and I'm going to come to Samantha first um, about the, the final challenge which was the, um, the fit challenge basically where you have to make a full item which they've had a chance to practice at home the uh, buffet dress which is incredibly popular right now because a lot of us have got a few right. little pounds that have, have joined us over lockdown and it's it's sort of quite flattering and they have five hours to make their dress what wow. did you think samantha was well first of all five hours yeah, that's, that's, easy. that's yeah, amazing that's that well, is amazing I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, so you correct me here. Ralph, is it? Ralph? Yeah, Ra or Raphael. Raphael, that's it. I love mm. that name. Um, I just felt amazing because I liked the colour. I liked the, um, the, the different cloths that he chose. To, the fact that he went down to dye. And I thought, you know what? You can make stuff for catwalk. That's how it seemed to me. He's got great imagination. I'm going to predict something here. I, I hope he wins. That's how I feel about him. So I think he's well, got I, a pattern there. And I love the way that he dyed, that dyed the fabric. Because I can't yes. think of anybody. I may be wrong, but I can't think of any other contestant that I've seen. That have, I've seen a couple of them in a previous series design and print their own fabric, but not actually buy something and print it. Whether that's going to be enough to carry him through, because that's his background. He's only learned to sew, I believe, during lockdown. Yes. So actually learning those techniques, he's still relatively new to that, but he's obviously got a great eye for colour. Um, and it was, we're it was. About, it, yeah, we're talking about colour, but I want to ask your opinion. What did you think of the dress? Because I was very impressed with the way it hung and the different layers that he did as well. It was, it was a nice storytelling, you know, and I, I'm impressed with him, but I just I love your opinion on this. Well, I, I liked the dress, but it wasn't it wasn't my favourite. Yes, I, I did have another another dress that that I preferred, and I think Alistair, you and I both agree on the dress that that we preferred. So I'm going to ask you mm. why 
you thought this other dress because I, I loved Ralph's and I love you know he looked at he looked at it he saw that it needed lining whereas Julie didn't appreciate that her broidery anglais that she'd bought would need lining because broidery anglais is holy mm -hmm. so you know if you're going to wear it and, and, and sort of uh, retain your modesty so to speak you do need to line it and that really put her out um, and he realized that but Alistair, tell us what you thought about the, the dress challenge. So I, I actually thought, I, I thought Raphael's dress was absolutely, ex, it was exquisite. And I think the placement of the, the balance and the placement of the different broadly on glaze, because it, we didn't just use one, he used, I think, three. So in the sleeve, it all balanced out. It was proportionate to the actual thing. The little details with the amber, they were really, really lovely. Um, I, however, thought that... Um, my favourite dress <clears throat> from that one um, had to be Adam's, and the reason why is the fit and flow. When you saw the man, um, when you saw the um, the model walk down, it it had everything going for it. Plus, also he was the only one that worked with the most difficult, one of the most difficult fabrics. Um, and in my opinion, I think for the, for the difficulty rating that he actually did and produced what he did in that five hours, I just thought was, you know, quite, quite stunning and quite amazing. And the fact that you had, you know, you had your slits and things like that. I mean, we didn't, we didn't see a lot of critique in terms of how it was finished and what have you, but I think as a general look, I think those two, those two dresses for me were the, 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 the top, the, they were my top two. But I think when you're dealing with something that's got a lot of, we'll call them cake layers, if you like, when you've got all this going on, when they were using a large stitch and they were just using one, if you were to use two, so if you pin hem your large pieces um, together and you use two tracks, what it does is it keeps what you're about to sew even flatter because you, you're going to remove that Anyway, and domestic machines have a much larger stitch than what I'm used to, which is a, and, and, and Samantha will be used to, which is a flatbed industrial. Um, yeah. So literally the, easy, the stitches are much easier to take out. So I think a little bit of, I'm always about, you know, patience and basting and doing what have you, because you just, it, it does save time. But everyone sometimes just wants to jump on the machine and let's get it sewed. Yeah, and, and I did look at it and think mm, a ruffle foot might be handy if you've got mm. a favourite ruffle. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure I've got a ruffle foot in my in my oh, uh, so somewhere. That might that might help save an hour or two um, because you you do the two strands. If you're not kept on one goes, you just oh. Or yeah, elastic. So, elastic, yes. Elastic is quite a good one as well. But then I think if you did if you did it with elastic, Esme might have a few words about because she's quite a purist, isn't she? But you hide it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't hide anything from them. They know and they see it all. But yeah. um, okay, well uh, that's fantastic. Now I, one thing I did want to quickly mention because I forgot to do it earlier when we were talking about the t-shirts was um, I think it was oh whose was it? The Pussycat T-shirt. Mm -hmm. oh. So for the, for the, the dress transformation at the front. Now, I did make a note of who it was. Was it... Um, was it it's the lady with the hairband, wasn't it? It was. So it was Jean, wasn't it? Yeah. Jean, Jean with the Yoda. You see, we're still learning everybody's names and we're still getting used to everybody. <laughs> but I absolutely loved it when Patrick lost the plot and couldn't stop giggling. And then Esme just went, I think that's my favorite part of the, of the series so far um, with, <laughs> with that actual wit. But there was a comment that was made and I did write it down in my notebook, right at the very beginning. I think it was the first, almost the first thing um, that was said as the guests were walking into um, the studio for the first time. And forgive me if I'm not saying this correctly, but, um, Laratu, Laratu, she said, I love my body the way it is, so I make clothes to fit it. And when she yeah. said that, 
that was just that's why I make clothes that's why I dress make and I just gave a little punch in the air then when I heard her saying that because she's all about body positivity so I really hope that she goes a long way in this and we get to see more of her creations because we know that a lot of the viewers um are, are, you know of a fuller figure like myself and we get into sewing because it's very difficult to buy uh, items off the shelf that fit and that flatter and like Alistair you said with the first challenge it was all about um, the finish on it but the last challenge is all about the fit and how it fits model um, and I think in the first two challenges Damien actually came last and Julie came second to last um, but in the final challenge in my opinion he saved himself with that with that last dress because of the fit of it on the model Otherwise, I think if he hadn't done quite so well in that final challenge, he would have been the one to go to go home. So, Alistair, what do you think? Who do, do, um, obviously, we know, and spoiler alert here, we know that Julie left. Julie came second to last in the mm. first two challenges, um, <clears throat> just ahead of Damien. And then, obviously, she didn't get finished with her final dress because she had to line it. And she had an issue that a lot of us have had during this period where we're buying fabrics from lockdown for, for, uh, from, uh, the, from the internet, we don't always know what they look like or how they behave. So she had a whole new step to do. And I did feel for her. I really did feel for her. And the tears, um, because mm. she wasn't, wasn't able to, to produce what she wanted to do. Yeah, I really did feel for her. But it wasn't, she'd made a top and it was, for a dress so what do you think Alistair about um who actually went home this first this first episode well I, I do agree with you I don't think anybody should have gone home in the first episode because <clears throat> the the uh, sometimes the first people who leave could actually be a bit of a wild card later on yeah. so mm. you, you actually don't know and you, you we haven't seen anything you're critiquing somebody on a, a, a one performance if you like I know there was three but um I think she's come she came across as very methodical when she was doing things and she came across as being quite precise which was lacking with a lot of other contestants um but I did feel that um for instance even though you brought a, a, a broad beyond glaze and you needed to put a lining in for instance, there's a really quick and simple ways of being able to just drop a, a, a little lining in. It, it's it's not you, you've got the, the they've got the pattern. I mean, one important thing to point out is the fact that they have the patterns. The patterns are there, so they are being critiqued purely on the makeup. Um, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily commission her to make my wedding dress just because of the time <laughs> constraints, um, but. Um, yeah, I, I, it, it's always a tough call to be the first person that goes out and nobody wants to be that. But I don't think, I think some people showed real, real strength. Now that doesn't mean that they're going to go on to, you know, do what have you. They could have some really bomb weeks and, and just, it might be a challenge that <clears throat> stretch fabrics, for instance, that's one of those like mm -hmm. you, you know, and, and, and what have you. So it, it'll be interesting to see, but I, I, did, I, I did feel for her that the fact that even though she had made a top, I actually thought when I looked at it, I actually thought that looks as if it's actually really well made. It's, yes. you know, it's not been rushed. It just, it, and the, the first tear that came off the, the breast just, it, it looks really, I could, I wish she had got time to finish it because I'd have loved to have seen that. Seen it. Um, yeah. It and I, been I, think, I think when you compare her to Farry and Farry's finish, there were loose threads everywhere, but because she'd come mm. further up in the first two sort of technical challenges, you know, Julie just had to not, Julie just had to finish really and she would have been fine. Because, <laughs> like you say, the finish on the on the dress itself was really nice and it fitted the model really well and i thought mm. she did she did a, she did a great job so we know that um uh julie went out how did you feel about that samantha i'm gonna be quite ruthless i'm sorry <laughs> spill the beans well i mean you've got a pattern 
follow the pattern. If you follow the pattern and you look at the, the back of the description of the pattern, it tells you what fabric is good for the pattern. You know, it tells you know, so you can get the best. There are good guidelines on a pattern, isn't mm. there? So if she'd have done what the pattern suggested, etc., she may not have panicked. I think when I started watching her the first time round, I'm going to be honest. I thought, oh, I don't know if you're going to be here, because does she really listen? I know Alistair says she's very methodical, but there's there's a lacking there somewhere. So is she really doing what the pattern says? Do you, do you understand mm. what I'm trying to say? Yes, mm. yes, I've I've got you because we saw Damien, not even he hardly read the first pattern. You know, yeah. he just did what was in his yeah. head. Yeah. Um, and like you say, there is, a, there is a lot of information already in your pattern when you look at the back that tells you about how much you need and the kinds of, the kinds yes, of fabric. Yeah. I mean, so, I'm, a pattern, um, I'm a pattern cutter, but to be honest with you, I'm lazy, so I will hack a pattern. <laughs> I'll hack it to death, change it all around. So they've also got the opportunity to do that, and I hope they do hack patterns because that's an in word at the moment isn't it hacking yeah. patterns really pattern let's hope that they do that that would be amazing if we get to see that two patterns merged where they have to yes. yeah that, yes. that, that, would, that would be great yeah. so um okay we we're, we're running out of time now but uh, just very quickly the winning dress we've already talked about garment of the week was Raphael. um uh, i've got a top three i thought each week we could talk about our top three for this week and um then next week we can have a look and see whether that those three have changed so my top three that um i had we we uh, serena i thought serena she won the first challenge i thought that was beautifully made that shell top um good choice of fabric um and her her her, her dress at the end so i think I think she's very talented whether she has enough experience because she's still very young will i think uh come through come through the series Raphael, i loved his final dress mm. Um, mm. again experience with lots of other fabrics i think it's going time will tell us whether you know that the creativity that comes from his textile art side of his personality with the mm. dyeing whether that's going to be enough to carry him on through i don't really know yet and then adam that that dress that dress he made for the last challenge was stunning so alistair what are your three? And feel free to disagree with me completely. <laughs> well, <clears throat> my three, um, <clears throat> and this, I, I'm sure this will change every every week. But I've got the three, um, I've got three boys. So I've got Adam, um, Andrew, and Raphael. I think from just seeing them and only judging it by the first episode, I saw consistency throughout. And it was just there, there was just there was just glimmers of what have you. I mean, for instance, um, I think it was Andrew the the t shirt dress that he did. He didn't just he put sleeves in it, and he he did he did quite a lot of work in terms of in that short space of time. So mm -hmm. I think there's I think there is real I think there's real potential. But to be honest, it's anybody's game. Anybody's gonna anybody can have a wobbly. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's nerves. It's managing the nerves, isn't it, that's going to be the hardest thing. So, Samantha, what's your three top well, picks? to be honest, I would like Raphael to win, but I feel, this is quite interesting, I feel Serena has got the technical to a, to, you know, to a real good point there. And I feel you've got Rebecca right behind her. Yes, yes. Rebecca was one we've not really, really talked about. And hopefully as we do this each week and we get yeah. to know more and more about the contestants and there are fewer and fewer of them, because obviously one goes a week, yeah. uh, we'll find it, we'll, we'll find lots of little nuggets in there. Can, can um, I just say one enjoy. thing before we go? Yeah. I, I just feel it's that journey, it's that fast, quick learning, it's that fast pace of who's learning, who's rising from the ashes. You know, you sell them right at the bottom and they just come up and surprise you and bingo, they're taking the prize. So it might end up being like that. Okay, <laughs> completely. Like Alistair yeah. says, somebody can just have a nightmare week and that's it, it's out the door because it's judged each week on just what happens that week. So I think it's going to be an interesting journey. And we're going to be here every week, aren't we, guys, having a mm -hmm. look at 
what's <laughs> happened in the previous show. So all of you who've watched us, thank you very much for coming along. But we'd really like you to get involved as well. So we're going to do a little, um, uh, a little poll at the end of each one of these, um, these videos. So you can get involved. Please comment underneath. Tell us whether you agree with us or not. Tell us who you think um, is, is, is the dark horse, maybe. Have a, have a conversation with that. But we're actually going to do a little poll. So I've got written down here, there's three options that we'd like you to vote on. So which, um, out of the three challenges, which was your favourite winner? So we've got Serena with the shell top. If you liked hers most, please put a red heart emoji. There we go. So we can see. Um, Andrew's t-shirt garment, a smiley face emoji, or Ralph's buffet dress, that beautiful broidery anglaise at the end, a thumbs up emoji, so that we can sort of be nosy and find out what you think. But we're really looking forward to the next episode next week, which I think is summer wear. So that's going to be an interesting one, because let's face it, once the snow has stopped, mm -hmm. we're all looking, at, looking forward to getting out and about, even if it's just in my back garden so i'm looking forward to seeing what challenges we've got and where like samantha said where the journey takes everybody um thank you alistair and samantha so much for joining me and i will see you guys next week when we come back here to um go behind the scenes see you mm -hmm. soon bye bye see you bye, bye.